Hello and good evening. Um, welcome to this edition of Conversations with Camden. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. And tonight's topic will be focused on structure and support here at Camden Military. Um, so what does that mean? Um, that means that we offer the structure that your son probably needs in a variety of ways through the military uh, program here that we offer also the daily routine when you get up at the same time every day, you go to bed at the same time every night, and you have your, your time pretty much allotted for you throughout the day. Um, they don't have a whole lot of free time, but the free time they do have is filled with activities. Um, we have mandatory study halls at night. So there's a lot of ways to kind of give these guys structure that they do need. Um, also, the guys that come to Camden, I get the question a good bit about, you know, what type of students do you have? Um, students here are pretty much um, your typical high school age boys. A um, little lazy, um, not doing as well as they could be doing in school not uh, turning in assignments as much as they should, not spending that amount of time on homework that they probably should be. And um, so, yeah, that's pretty much our typical student. We do have some students that come to us with a learning challenge like ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, dysgraphia, different, different things like that. Um, and we can support, provide support for most of those um, you know, small learning challenges. So um, look forward to discussing all of this with you tonight. And I have a panel of, of students and teachers and administration with me tonight. And uh, we're going to start off and let these guys introduce themselves. And um, we'll let the cadets go first and oldest to youngest. Um, Giuliano, if you will, just give us a brief introduction, who you are, how you've been here, where you're from. Hello, everyone. I am Lieutenant Giuliano. I'm from Alpha Company, and I have been here for three years. And I am from Lewis, Delaware. Delaware. All right. Yankee amongst us. All right. Let's go to uh, Simmons. Tell us Hello, everybody. My name is John Simmons. I'm from, uh, I just recently moved to TKK, South Carolina. It's my fourth year. I'm in Van Staff Company. And when you originally started, you were from? Colorado. Colorado, yeah. All right. And now we're going to move into the staff here at CMA. Um, we'll start out with uh, Colonel Heflin. You will just kind of tell us your name, your, your position, what do you do here? Hi, I'm Colonel Heflin. I'm the Dean of Students. I coach cross country, do FCA. Uh, we're doing newspaper for the first time in about 15 years and uh, teach three history classes. All right. And then Captain Trapp, um, if you will, kind of the same as, as Colonel Heflin. Hey, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Matt Trapp. I was a teacher and a coach here um, before I stepped into the uh, administration side of things. So uh, now I work in the admissions department. But um, Yep, teacher, coach, and now in admission. So I've done a little bit of everything. All right. And then lastly, myself, um, I am Casey Robinson. I'm Dean of Enrollment Administration and uh, been here for a little over 20 years and um, teach one class a day, um, which is a marketing class. But anyway, thanks again for joining us tonight. We want to make sure this remains interactive as well as informative. So please, if you have questions, you can post them right in the, in the uh, YouTube chat or you can post on any social media platform, just use the hashtag uh, Camden Military and we'll get as many of those questions as possible tonight. Um, I do wanna jump in and talk about structure kind of right off the bat. Um, a lot of parents, when they first come to me again, talk about, hey, my son needs structure. And I wanna kind of talk about what these guys, you know, how do they feel like that CMA has provided structure for them? So Juliana, we'll start with you. Tell us kind of some ways that you feel CMA has provided structure within your life, within your academics. Well, of course, I got to start off with the mandatory study hall. I was always struggling in like normal high school with getting my homework done and actually having a time to sit down and do it because I would always get distracted with either doing video games or having to hang out with friends or eating dinner or eating something or playing in my room. I would always get distracted. So having a mandatory time to just sit down, get your work done so I could turn it in the next day, that's what I really like about it. All right. And Simmons, we'll kind of ask you the same question. What's a way that CMA has provided structure for you that's been beneficial? Um, I don't really think academics were really a huge problem for me. So the main way that it's provided structure for me has really been through like just being held accountable for everything you do. I mean, you do something bad, you get punished. You do something good, you get rewarded. All right. Very good. And uh, Colonel Hufflin, what's something you think that kind of uh, CMA provides these young men when they enroll that gives them maybe the structure they need? Uh, I, I agree that, you know, the study hall and the extra help, the small classroom size is really key because 
an individual is able to get that where in most public schools or even some private schools, they do not have that uh, class uh, ratio with uh, student to teacher. Yeah. And uh, Captain Trav, if you will, just kind of add on to that a little bit about our, our small class sizes. Do you think that's a good benefit for these students? I do very much so. Um, you know, just coming from uh, teaching in a smaller class, um, you know, we kind of take a little more individualized approach. Um, so you're not getting lost in a classroom of, you know, 30 kids. Um, you know, it's a, a very small class. So if you need, if you have a question, um, you, you can ask it, you know, we can go over the answers, we can uh, get you a better understanding of it. So I do think the smaller class sizes is, is probably um, one of our best support systems as far as academics um, here at CMA. All right. All right. So kind of an, a quick overview. Now we're going to kind of dive deeper with that. And um, Juliana, we'll start off with you again. I guess, if you will, kind of talk about your academic um, experience before Camden and then has it changed any? It definitely has changed. So I have a learning disability, uh, dyslexia. Uh, I could not read at all. It was definitely a struggle. And then going into my freshman year of high school, I went into a public school, uh, about 30 kids in one class. And I would always be distracted with my friends at, sitting at the, the desk with me and the teacher just not able to do one-on-one -on -one time with me. And I was honestly failing every single class. At the rate I was, I would have not gone to college. So my mom took the liberty in her own hands and sent me here. And it has been a world of help. Uh, the smaller class sizes, the one-on-one -on -one with the teacher, there's different times in the day you can meet with your teacher, tutorial, study hall. Um, I love the homework. It's really, it's really great. They give a good amount of homework and the study hall. I can never forget about the study hall. The study hall has been great. All right, great, thanks. And uh, Summons, you had mentioned, you know, that academically you were doing all right, but you know, that you really appreciate the fact of being held accountable for your actions here and that type of thing. So how, has think, how have things changed for you um, pre-Camden to since you've been enrolled? Um, I mean, I mean, obviously I've matured a lot, um, but. I remember your first couple of years were a little rough. I remember you were in a particular company yeah. and you, uh, seemed to get in trouble a good bit. And we, we, what did we do to kind of help you get over the hump? I mean, there's, there's tack officers, there's tack officers with you like 24 seven. So they're always there to, if you're doing something, they're always there to like correct you and help you out. Do you think your parents have known any noticed any change in you, um, in your behavior, attitude, anything like that? I mean, I hope so. They, I think so. They treat me uh, like I'm more mature. Yeah, it's, you definitely, you definitely are matured. I've seen you grow up here, and I know your parents do uh, notice some changes because I've had conversations with them. Um, all right, let's go back to um, Juliana really quick. The question is. What made you decide to look at boarding school as an option to begin with? So was it your idea, your parents' idea, and, and why? So it wasn't my idea. Um, my parents just gave me the option and said, you know, we're going to try Camden. We're going to see how it goes. And I was not for it. I remember waking up the next day saying, I am not going to go. There's nothing you could do to make me go. I won't go. And my parents said, well, you don't have a decision. So I went. Um, I did not like it the first two weeks I was there. And what I like to tell people is put into CMA what you're going to get out of CMA. Because if you put into CMA a bad attitude, it's going to give you a bad result. So if you go into it saying, OK, I'm going to join clubs, I'm going to have friends, I'm going to join a sport. I'm going to do well in my academics. I'm going to really thrive at CMA. It's going to give you a good outcome. And that's what I really liked about it. I definitely struggled my first year. So definitely it takes three, two or three years to keep getting the results you want from CMA. But definitely it was not my decision. But it was a great decision in the end. All right. Very good. And for most young men that we have here, it's not their initial decisions. Uh, you know, the guys very rarely wake up and decide, you know, military school is what's for them. Um, we do have some guys who are, you know, gung-ho about it, and this is all they've ever wanted to do, and maybe attend a military college or, you know, go to a service academy, um, but that's definitely the minority. Um, all right, we have another question that said, Giuliano mentioned video games. What's the electronics policy? Giuliano, since you mentioned it, why don't you tell us the electronics policy here, Cameron? 
So you can have an Xbox or a PlayStation or anything you really like, um, but you can only use it during free time. Uh, mandatory study hall, you are not allowed to use your phone. You are not allowed to use your Xbox. You cannot turn on any electronics at all. You are man it is mandatory for you to study. That is what you should be doing. There's a teacher that walks around in the barracks to make sure that you're on task. If you have any questions, you can ask them, but mandatory study hall is that's when you should do. So free time is definitely the best time to play your video games and do all that. Cause the rest of the day you'll be busy either doing school, doing sports or just doing drill. All right. Very good. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you keep mentioning study hall and that is a very important aspect. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we, we talk with a lot of, of families and students and that homework always tends to be what brings grades down. Um, you know, young men may test phenomenally, uh, you know, make good grades as far as class participation. But when it comes to getting individual own your own time projects or homework done, um, it's a problem. And I know even some schools, I had a, fa a family visited earlier today from California who said, you know, my son never has homework. Um, they just don't give homework anymore. In my day, I sound like old now, very old. Um, you know, I was, it was told to me that homework was important because it was to back up and support what you did during the school day to make sure you didn't forget everything overnight before you saw that teacher again. Um, so I'm going to throw it to Colonel Heflin. What, what's your value in the, the mandatory study halls? Well, I, th I think I think the mandatory study halls provide additional support. Um, maybe you didn't get it in the classroom, uh, and maybe you just need some one-on-one -on -one time, and um, and you're also able to use other resources such as going to the library to use the um, uh, computers that we provide in the library. So I think that adds to it as well. But um, you're also in a relaxed situation, being in your room, um, you know, in in your confined area with you and your roommate. Uh, and so I think that adds to it as well, but definitely uh, as well, going to the library, being able to, you know, use devices and doing research, uh, wh whether it's computer or the traditional way, uh, using books and magazines and periodicals. And um, you brought up a, a good point, and I want to talk about it again. Giuliano had mentioned electronics, and we talked about video games. Um, one thing that we do here at Camden is in the academic side of the house is very traditional. Um, so we do have electronics, you know, we have iPads, we have Chromebooks, all that fun stuff, but the students do not have them or keep them. Um, those are passed out during the school day. So if we have, if we're in econ class and we need our, our laptop or iPad, um, we pass the devices out and then take them back up at the end of class. Um, so we still use textbooks, things like that. So uh, Captain Trapp, what, what do you see the importance of having for lack of a better term, the old school textbooks and highlighters and taking notes, that kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, it's like I tell all, all the, the parents that I talk to is I think we found uh, here, we found a good balance between, um, you know, utilizing technology, because obviously you're going to have to have um, some of that in, in your future career and everything else. But, uh, you know, we are very traditional and I've, you know, in the classroom, it just seemed to fare better with uh, my students, and I think that goes for all the teachers here, um, you know, it's just we're not handing them a computer to just do an assignment or, you know, here's your virtual assignment. Here's what you need to do. No, it's, you know, you're opening a textbook. We're reading. We're writing. If you need help with it, um, you know, we're, we're not just giving you something to to go off on your own. You know, it's, it's very much so active teaching. Um, and I just think that that fare so much better with engaged learning, you know, in, in kind of that traditional mindset than, than a lot of the, the public schools and, and even some private schools are doing now with, with this whole virtual wave. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's just, just absolutely great. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Cause we have students that arrive uh, here at Camden and, and they don't know how to study. Um, you know, they've never, they don't have any study skills and uh, that's something you've got to have at the next level. Um, but you really need it in high school as well. But, um, so yeah, we spent some time talking about study skills, the most effective strat strategies um, for studying, things like that. Um, one other aspect that a lot of parents have given me feedback on that they really appreciate is the shorter classes. Um, Giuliano, tell me about that a little bit. I know, I don't think you've experienced, well, maybe you did, I don't know, I can't remember how long you've been here exactly, but um, you know, a lot of people are now attending block schedules, um, which a class may last an hour and a half in, in some instances. Um, our classes are about 45 minutes. How do you feel about that? I like it a lot because for someone that has ADHD, 
I am not going to be focused for that long a period of time. I won't be able to focus on the, I'll need to get up and like move around. So knowing that it's only 45 minutes and I could just be one-on-one -on -one with that teacher for 45 minutes, put my full effort and focus into that subject and then move on to the next subject. That's what I like about it. And it's not a different class each day. It's the same classes, the same thing, the same routine every single day. And that's what I like about it. Yeah, that's, and I think that's huge. Um, I, you know, I, I joke often and say, I think all men, boys, whatever, have ADD or ADHD. And um, I, I really think that the small classes are pretty much tailor-made for, for boys. Um, of course, boys and girls learn differently. And so being all male, we're kind of able to do things, you know, that are um, more male oriented and, and beneficial. Um, you know, for, for example, we do have an engaged learning environment. There's a lots of hands-on activities, things like that. You'll still be going to whiteboards and, and, and those type things. Um, and then we have another project. We do special projects throughout the year. Colonel Hufflin, I'm gonna let you talk about your National History Day and kind of how that's incorporated pretty much into our curriculum nowadays. Well, um, you know, different people learn in different ways. Uh, a lot of people learn hands-on. Some people learn through music, uh, just to name two things. Uh, but this year's National History Day themes was Frontiers in History. And uh, so one of the groups, um, you can have five people in a group and uh, four of the guys out of the five has been here since the eighth grade, including uh, John. And so um, we basically used astronauts and two of them being from South Carolina. And uh, one of those astronauts was Ron McNair and who was killed in 1986 in the uh, explosion of the uh, space shuttle under the Challenger. And so therefore uh, myself and Ms. Thaxon, we went to Lake City with these guys and we did research and we were able to meet Ron McNair's wife, uh, his two brothers and his friends and to just you know talk to these, these people uh, and you could read about Ron McNair in a book, and uh, but you'll never get that one-on-one -on -one attention that those guys were able to get. We're also able to go to Charles Bolden's household, uh, childhood home, I should say, in, in Columbia and sit in the uh, same house where he grew up, which pretty much looks the same as uh, when his parents were living. His brother lives there and his family, and uh, and we also recently did a Zoom interview with Charles Bolden. Uh, so again, you can read about these two guys, but you can go do hands-on types of activities. And last week, last Saturday, we competed for the regional. And um, uh, so hopefully we were able to move to the next round. And so uh, uh, these guys are able to see history uh, come alive. But um, also, John, if you would add to that as well, please, and your experience as an eighth grader until now, uh, because this is your third time, if I'm correct, of, of doing History Day. Uh, yeah, I mean, going from an eighth grader until now, I mean, it's definitely a big change. Whenever I was an eighth grader, we had a lot of stuff done for us. But now, being a junior, it's definitely more of a challenge having to do all that work by yourself. Um, I mean, it's fun. It's the last two years we made it to nationals, but we weren't able to compete at nationals because of COVID. So I'm really excited and hope I'm hopeful that we make it to nationals this year so we can compete in person at in Annapolis. All right. Very good. And like I said, you know, it's not just the history classes. A lot of our classes are doing um, lots of hands-on work. We have the science class firing off rockets and, you know, cool stuff like that, dissecting cats and pigs and, and all kinds of different animals. So uh, again, we'd like to get in and get our hands dirty here at, uh, at Camden. Now, hey, I have a question. Can I add, yeah. can I add something to that? Um, um, we also uh, here in Camden, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are not from South Carolina, You've heard about the Camden burials where they were able to, um, they found some some bodies from the Revolutionary War, and uh, which is which is really neat. And uh, those five guys that are that are doing History Day are also going to participate in a play um, where they're going to reenact the Revolutionary War uh, on um, actually it's the same day as the next round of the um, History Day on uh, April the twenty second. And so John's going to play uh, a character as well, and mostly all of them are going to. Uh, be patriot soldiers and so um you know it, it just gives them another opportunity so you, you know you're talking about astronauts but you're also talking about the revolutionary war and uh, people are going to come from a very long ways and so they they will never forget that and again you can read about the revolutionary war but actually putting your hands on uh, the battle of camden uh is going to give them a first-hand account and something they would be able to tell their children and grandchildren one day 
Yeah, yeah, very, very cool thing coming up. Um, all right, I have a question come in. It says, my son would like to know more options about what you do during free time. So um, I, will, I will give both of these young men a chance to answer this question, but I wanna kind of preempt that with both of them were, was here on campus during COVID. And of course, during COVID, we didn't get off campus a whole lot. Um, but this year, luckily, we have opened back up. So I'm going to throw it over to Giuliano first. Um, what's some things you do to free during your free time? So I play tennis. I love going to the tennis courts during free time. Uh, practice my serve, practice my form, so I'll do better in competitions. But uh, what I really like doing if I don't have tennis I love sitting down and just talking to my friends. We have this Carlisle house where they sell food and drinks. You could go over there with your friends and hang out. We have the football field where you could go and toss the football with them. And we have the basketball court. There's all these different things you can do around campus that will include you in the brotherhood of Camden. And that's what I really like. That's how I made a lot of friends here. And that's how I kind of really got involved in CMA and how I am able to thrive here. <laughs> John, what's some things that we do during free time uh, to occupy your time? Well, there's all the sports facilities. So we have a swimming pool, tennis courts, baseball field, football field, lacrosse field, soccer field. And then uh, during my free time, I'm part of the blackjack drill team. So we have this drill team that we do uh, these rifle movements. There's exhibition and manual rifle movements. And you spin rifles, compete. You go to competitions at Air Force bases. Most years we go to Washington. This year we're not going though. Um, if I'm not doing black checks, there's a weight room. Um, there's a track. Uh, I'll watch movies inside my room on the weekend with my roommate. Uh, Xbox, Carla House, there's pool tables, TVs. There's a piano in the Carla House. Uh, yeah. Books in the Carla House, library. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to do here. A lot going on. And we have on the weekends too, we have some trips um, planned throughout the year where we go to NFL games, NBA games, um, you know, lots of things happening, do paintball and we're actually getting ready to have a company paintball uh, competition coming up. Um, so we got, we do some fun things to kind of fill in that time. Like I said, you don't have a whole lot of free time. So, you know, the, the free time that you do have is pretty much structured and laid out. You may have 45 minutes, an hour that, you know, you can do what you want to do, but for the most part, you know, your day is pretty, pretty well laid out for you. Um, Coach Trapp or Captain Trapp, I'm going to let you answer this one. Um, this says, you mentioned earlier that students can bring their own tech equipment. Uh, do you have any internet and device policies and limits to protect cadets from what they could access on the internet? Yes, definitely. So um, <clears throat> like, like we talked about earlier, we do allow electronics, um, you know, TVs, as long as they're uh, in the size restrictions, um, Xboxes, PlayStations, um, we even allow cell phones. Um, however, all of the electronics here are uh, privileges, so they can be taken at any time and for X amount of time or the entirety of the year, um, depending on if you choose to abuse them. Um, as far as internet goes, we do provide internet in the academic halls and in the library, but we do not provide it in the barracks. So the barracks, uh, we do not have internet in the barracks. We can only, you know, the internet that we provide, we can monitor. So we do always tell parents, if you do send them with a cell phone or a mobile hotspot that, you know, just, just be aware that we can't monitor that. So, um, you know, if your son, uh, I was talking to a family today and, you know, their big thing was he's just attached to the cell phone. And they said, well, you know, if we send him without a cell phone, we'll be, will he be at a disadvantage. And no, he won't be. I mean, we have students here who have brought every piece of electronics we allow, and we have students here who um, don't have any electronics. So it does not put them at any less of a disadvantage. If anything, it shows them that there's a world outside of social media and outside of having a cell phone. So, um, you know, like I always tell students, get involved and, you know, hang out with the guys who are around you and just kind of enjoy life in the moment. So, but yeah, that's kind of our policy as far as electronics go. Yeah, very good. All right, got another question. Uh, how are the medications dispensed if a student takes meds? Um, we have three nurses here at CMA. One actually lives on campus, so she's on campus, you know, in the middle of the night in case there's any any issues, someone getting sick. But they will actually bring the, the medicines to the boys first thing in the morning, last thing at night. So they don't have to worry about trying to remember to go over. If they take anything midday, they would have to go over to the infirmary um, after lunch and, and pick that up. Um, but for the most part, we take care of it. 
prescriptions. Um, you know, the, the nurses will go to the local pharmacy and pick those up as well. If your son's taking a control substance, um, you may have to ship that to us using um, UPS or FedEx. Um, that's actually prohibited to go through U.S. mail. Um, so we'll never get it if you, if you try to be sneaky and send it that way. Um, so I do encourage families to use FedEx or UPS for that. So I hope that answered that question. All right. And uh, what's the homework load look like? Um, that sounds like a student might be watching. So I'm going to turn this over to the Dean of Students. Um, what's the requirement for teachers with homework? How much do they typically give students in a night? Each, each teacher typically gives about 15 to 20 minutes of homework a night. Um, and sometimes, uh, like in one of the classes I have, we, we have an ongoing paper project that they've been working on. So, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's kind of spread out in parts. So like you get a whole week to do it. So in, that could be 10 minutes. That would give you a little bit more time in some other classes, but uh, all teachers are required to assign homework. And um, even if it's just reviewing um, something that maybe a, a math problem that you had in class, because you're going to have a test on it down the road or something of that nature. All right. And how about um, from the student's perspective, Simmons, would you agree with Coach Eflin? How long do you actually spend on homework each night? Uh, yeah, I'd say about 15 to 20 minutes each night. Um, if Sometimes a little bit more, but not usually less than that. So it's a, it's a good workload for the hour and a half you're given for study hall. All right. Good. All righty, uh, Giuliano, got a question for you. Um, it says, what are the decorations on Giuliano's uniform and how do you earn them? Okay, so I am an officer. So these you get as an officer. I'm a second lieutenant. Um, these are my crests. This is my um, rank here and my senior. So I'm a senior, so this is my grade. Uh, these are my ribbons I have here. You can earn these ribbons by doing stuff around the school, helping out with the school and just the achievements that you have. This is my name tag. Clearly, I have that here. This is the honor star. Each cadet will get an honor star that we must require to wear. And this is my uh, honor gold star. So if you have or obtained honor roll for the upcoming semester for a period of time, then you get one of these and you get to wear it on your parade jacket. Right. Thank you for that. Now, I want to talk about teachers for a second. Um, I think our teachers are probably um, some of the most dedicated around. They, they actually have a very long day, um, especially if they have study hall duty. So they would basically arrive. Our classes day starts at 930 in the morning and uh, study hall wraps up at nine. So sometimes they could be here close to 12 hours for, for one day. But um, I guess I'll throw it to Dean of Students again, Heflin. What would you say that kind of makes our teachers maybe a little different than public school or even other private day schools? Um, I think the most thing that uh, that stands out different is um, willing to go above and beyond. Um, I, I'll use our, our drama teacher and uh, fine arts teacher who also has taught history that helps us with history day. Um, she doesn't mind coming here and staying, you know, two or three extra hours after the school day to work with these guys and and, um, you know, coaching them and, and, and their, their actions of how they should act on the stage and things in which they should do. Um, our Boy Scout teacher who, um, excuse me, our biology teacher who does Boy Scout Scouts um, is, is here and he doesn't mind giving up his time to take them um, to help do activities to get their marriage merit badge or um, going on camp outs and, and things of that nature. So er everyone's willing to go above and beyond. And, and when I was first hired at Camden way back in the day, um, I was told that this is a boarding school and it's a military boarding school. So it's a lot different um, than traditional school. And you have to be that type of person um, because this is what it takes to work here. And, 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 and that person was right. They're absolutely right. And I think our guys go above and beyond and, and it's, we're part of the extended family. Yeah. I was actually told something very similar. I was told this isn't a job. This is a way of life. So you're not just, you know, taking a job and getting a paycheck for it. All right. Um, I want to ask the students now, we'll start with Giuliano. What's some um, differences maybe between teachers that you had at your previous school and the teachers here at Camden? Or, or are there any differences? Oh, there are so many differences. Uh, at my old public school, I wouldn't be able to come to my teachers at my old public school and be able to talk to them about problems that I have 
either at homework or personal or unable to talk to my teachers one-on-one -on -one and not really have a relationship with them. Here at CMA, you see these teachers every single day. You're living on campus. You see them, they, some coach sports, somehow I'm out with activities, some teach you. You'll see them every single day throughout the campus and you'll just form a good relationship with them. And you'll start being able to come to them with problems that you have, uh, stuff you want to talk about. Just if you're happy in general, you want to sit down and talk, you'll be able to talk to them. So definitely the teacher-student relationship is, is incredible. All right. Simmons, how do you feel about that? Uh, the teachers maybe at your prior school and, and teachers here at CMA, are they different? Um, one of the biggest things that I noticed is like the um, – I think the, te the teachers here are highly qualified. Like they're, they're all really good teachers. Like they're excellent teachers. And adding on to what Juliana said, I mean, that relationship that you build with them isn't just like, it could be like friendly. It doesn't have to be just student teacher. It's a friendly relationship. And you talk to them every day. You, you know, you, you can walk into the classroom, talk to them about something that's not even related to school. And that's one of my favorite things about the school is the teacher student relationship. Yeah. I remember Simmons actually, I live here on campus and he used to live very close to my house and I got a puppy during the start of COVID. And of course he was here during COVID and he's pretty much, um, I guess, Belle is my dog's name. He's pretty much the favorite cadet and she can kind of hear his voice wherever it is on campus. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, some questions have come in. It says, if we use, if we, if we are out of state, is there health insurance that we need to buy for our kid? Um, we, you're, if you're out of state, your health insurance that you currently have would cover him here in South Carolina on most policies. Most policies have a clause for boarding school. Um, so just check with your carrier. Um, but you do have to have some type of health insurance to attend. So if you don't have health insurance currently, you would need to purchase some um, for him to attend here. Um, another question, how often do they get to go home? Um, it really depends on where you're from. So let Juliano, you're from Delaware. How often do you go home? Well, my mom, so every furlough, my mom tries to get me home as much as possible. On the mandatory breaks, you have to go home, which is I love that we have mandatory breaks. But on the furloughs, I can hey, go Hey, home. We, we like the mandatory breaks, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I go home on the furloughs every single, every single furlough I can. Um, the transportation management is really good here because my mom can just – easily type in my flight information. We send it to the school and they can get me to the, the airport. I can navigate my way through the airport perfectly fine. Um, what I really like is that it's an open campus. So my mom can come to the campus and just hang out with me for a furlough, take me out to eat and bring me right back. That's what I like. And it's really good to have family come over to Camden because you get to show them what you experience. And it's, it's, it makes them very proud that you're doing this. And that's what I loved about it. All right. Now, uh, John, you're a little, you know, just up the road here in, in TK. So um, how often do you actually go home? You know, it's funny. I actually don't go home as often as Juliano does, even though he lives in Delaware, because my parents are always busy. So, I mean, I have the opportunity to go home every single furlough. My dad can come pick me up, take me off campus every single weekend if he wanted to. But my parents are super busy, so that doesn't really happen. Gotcha. And then we have students, you know, from all over the country this year, it's over 30 states and I think maybe four or five countries. And um, yeah, I mean, people that live farther away, um, you know, may not be able to go home every weekend. Students have the opportunity, opportunity to go home about one weekend per month. So they would need to uh, earn that though. So they have to have good grades, good behavior. And um, then they're awarded with a weekend at home. Um, if you can't go all the way to Delaware or all the way to California, wherever they may be from, uh, they can go home with a friend that's here, you know, Locally, when I say locally, I mean within the southeastern region. Uh, they can go to Atlanta, they can go to Charleston, Hilton Head, Myrtle Beach, um, somewhere in Florida. Um, so there's always some opportunities um, to go home with, with friends here that they meet. All right, uh, let's see another question coming in. How often can cadets call home? Okay, big difference. Um, so Juliano, how often do you call and talk to your, your mom at home? So at first I would call my mom every day, all day, every day. Like just, I was, I was so like upset and I, I wanted to come home and, you know, that's completely normal. Through over the years and over the weeks that I've been at CMA, you start to form relationships with friends and teachers and staff here, and you start getting more and more busier. So you're not really always calling home. I'll call home now that I'm a senior, I'll call home probably twice a week because I am so busy with either rank 
either sports, either school, either hanging out with friends. And I'll, I won't forget, but you know, it'll, it won't really pass my mind as much to call home. Um, but I definitely call home. If you really would want to, you could call home at free time. There's definitely time to call them in the morning at night. There's different times you could call them, but you definitely have like the appropriate times to call them. All right. And yeah, I mean, and, and we allow students to have their phone back after the first two weeks. There's a two week period for all new students when you can't have your cell phone. Um, and, you know, I call it detoxing from from the devices, um, you know, where they are not addicted to social media, where they're not addicted to texting their friends and snapping it back to every snap they get, things like that. So, um, yeah, but after two weeks, they're able to call text as often as they like. I do get calls from moms, though, that say, hey, I've been trying to get my son. I can't get him. What have you done to him? What is he in trouble? And no, but like Giuliano said, he's busy. You know, um, he has that daily routine here. So there's not a whole lot of free time that they can dedicate to just, you know, answering mom's calls or, or things like that. So don't let your feelings get hurt. Um, but just appreciate the fact that he's busy and, and doing the right thing while he's here. Um, next question has come in. Um, and don't forget, guys, if you have questions, please post them in the uh, YouTube chat or any social media platform, uh, hashtag Camden Military, and we will get these questions on the air tonight. Uh, what help do cadets receive when applying for college? Uh, let's go back to Dean of Students for that. Um, Colonel Hufflin, if you will, talk to us what supports in place for the guys applying for college. Um, we, have, um, we have faculty advisors, and uh, those faculty advisors are assigned uh, a certain amount of students uh, that are seniors, and those guys um, will, help them with the college application. So basically you would say, hey, where you wanna to go to school? And we would help to facilitate them applying to their uh, different colleges. But uh, you also have to keep in mind that um, just because you're going to school in South Carolina here, it does not make you a resident of South Carolina. So you uh, also have to apply to schools um, where you're from. But we have had a lot of students that um, have stayed here in South Carolina, went to colleges uh, here in South Carolina, but, um, and we also, from time to time, some parents will ask us to help with their uh, financial aid uh, information, but that's a little bit more tricky because there's a lot of privacy issues involved in that, but we do um, try to help as much as we can with that. And if we're, if possible, we would like to um, take some of these guys on some college visits uh, uh, if the school's, you know, pretty, pretty close. Uh, and uh, for example, um, we've taken the students to University of South Carolina and Coca College, and also uh, one year we took some students down to Marion, Alabama, to Marion Military Institute. Yeah, we'll take them to any school except Clemson, right, guys? All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Next question is: What kind of discipline is there at Camden? Um, so, Captain Trap, I'm gonna let you talk about this a little bit. Um, do we beat them? Do we withhold food and water? What's our discipline policy? We beat them. No, we're not quite that extreme. Um, so our discipline policy here is, uh, you know, depending on the severity of what they do. Um, what I mean by that is if, if, if it's a classroom issue, so for example, if they're, you know, dozing off in class or, you know, they're not turning in home, um, it's going to be very similar to uh, any other public school. You're going to get a uh, detention. Um, so you're going to have to serve detention with that teacher um, after class, rather that's completing the homework assignment that you missed um, or, you know, you're just staying to do an extra assignment or, or you know, holding you back from some of your free time um, to, to pay them back for falling asleep in their class. Um, if it's something a little more severe, like, for example, in class, if you do something that's, you know, disruptive or in the barracks, you do something that causes you to uh, basically get something called tours. Um, a tour is during your free time and weekends, we have time allotted so that you can wear your uniform very proud as you march around our parade field. Um, so, you know, the TAC officer will assign those, um, how many you have. Again, you know, you could get uh, one or two days of walking pad. Um, you could get a week of walking pad. Uh, but I can tell you this, and I think all the students will tell you this, it is hot in the summertime and it's cold in the winter. So it's not much fun out there walking pad. Um, but really that's, you know, that's our disciplinary measures that we're here. So no, we're not going to, you know, it's not like a, a boot camp where we're going to make you do a thousand push-ups, but we do have disciplinary action set in place. Um, everything here, you know, for every action, there is a, a, a consequence, rather that's a good one or a bad one. Um, you know, accountability is, is one of the big things that we hark on here. Yes. All right. Well said. 
All right. Um, another question has come in. It says, what's the effectiveness of Camden if senior cadets were only able to attend for one year? Okay, so I'll take that one and then I'll get some feedback on it. Um, our typical student is here for about two years. That's the average length of stay. Um, students that generally start with us in 10th grade end up graduating. Um, so will one year help? Absolutely. Um, is it gonna you know, turn around everything? Mm, I don't know, um, can't guarantee that. I can tell you that the students who have been here for two or more years and they transfer back to a public school or they go on to college, we typically don't hear back from, like they're successful there. Um, but students that are here just for a semester or for one year, sometimes we hear back from. Not always the case though, one year can make a big difference. Um, it gives guys a, an introduction to good study skills. Um, you know, really what we try to do with these young men is give them the tools to be successful in college with the time management, the organization and things like that. When you have all of that in place, you're set up for success. One year gives you the introduction, but it may not change 11 other years of, of bad habits um, that, you, that you've built up. But I will say that, yeah, it's beneficial. We also have a post-grad year, so they could actually take all college courses during the post-grad uh, year, which is like a 13th year of high school, um, and you know, and, and then go to college after that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be just one year. But uh, I will ask Dean of Students, kind of what's your perspective on that? I, I, um, I think we, over the years, we've had uh, quite a few seniors. Um, we have some this year and we've had some uh, the year before um, that has just come for one year. Uh, it depends on the reason. I think it's a case by case basis um, that we would like to talk to you one on one about why would it be just a year if you were a senior? Uh, because there are opportunities and things in which you can do. You can come here and take dual enrollment college classes uh, through the University of South Carolina. And so you can go into college uh, a leg up um, to speak. Um, where you are able to, um, you know, knock out some of those classes that you would take as a traditional freshman in college, but you're here on this campus in a smaller class environment, and you with teachers who truly care is going to go again above and beyond to help you in that class. Where if you're in a, a large college, um, they may not do that, and so uh, I think that that's that's that advantage. It's also uh, we've had some guys who come here for. Um, you know, to get better in sports um, or to be able to play more than one sport. So again, it's a case by case basis. So um, we usually like to talk to you one on one about um, about that. But I would say, again, I agree the, you know, the average stays is two years, but um, John's been here since the eighth grade. And um, there's uh, about four other guys that's in, in his class that's been here since the eighth grade. And typically we have um, on average about 15 people who've been here at least uh, four years um, graduate every year. And that's been going on for about 12, 13 years now. Yeah. All right. Very good. Um, all right. Got another question here that uh, I want to throw out to the guys that, you know, school is not just about textbooks and grades. Um, there's other things that we work on here at Camden and it may be, you know, accountability we've talked about, um, but I want to ask, I guess, Cadet Giuliano first, um, what's the biggest change you've noticed in yourself over your three years here? Um, you know, you're a senior, you're going to be going on to bigger and greater things after uh, May 20th, but what's, a, what's something here that Camden, outside of the classroom, that's really going to pay huge dividends for you? I have to really say time management is a big thing because not only did I really need time management, it's as if I did not know when to do something at what time. So here at Camden, there's a specific time that you have to do it. So it's, for example, at six o'clock, you have to wake up. Then 6.15, you have to clean your room. I was so bad at time management my first year. And over the years, it's just muscle memory, like six o'clock, wake up, 6.15, clean your room. 6.30, clean the fallouts, do stuff in the barracks. 7 o'clock, go to breakfast. It's time management. It's just muscle memory. And I think that's going to really help me in college is time management. Like, oh, this is when I need to go to class. This is when I need to do my homework. This is the best time to hang out with friends. Time management definitely helped me. So that's definitely one. I think another has to be study skills. Teachers here give you the way to study. And that's what I like. When I was in public school, I had no idea how to study anything. I didn't, was terrible at memorizing things on tests. Whenever we took tests, I'd get subpar, maybe 60. Um, 
Then once I came to Camden, my teacher actually showed me a way to study, which was using flashcards, going over them every single day, even if it was just at my free time. If I was walking to the tennis course, just flipping through those flashcards, doing that. And I think studying was definitely one of the best things. So if I had to say something I'd take from Camden that I'm going to use in my next year in college is probably studying and time management. All right. Good job. And Simmons, um, we'll ask you the same question or, or similar question, I guess. Um, I would say I notice a lot of young men have a change in their level of confidence. Um, you know, maybe their self-esteem goes up, they're, they're just carry themselves different. It might be from earning rank or whatever. Has confidence, your confidence in yourself changed since you've been here at Camden? Um, I would say definitely, yeah. I mean, I don't just notice it myself. I notice it in other people. They carry themselves differently. And it's really like the school system here really changes your attitude about things. And your attitude is changes everything. I mean, that's that's one of the biggest things that I notice is be, uh, be, uh, more confidence in class. Like more willingness to raise your hand and ask questions instead of just sitting in the back of the class not saying anything. All right. Good job. Okay. Got a question coming in uh, for college acceptances. Do you have volunteer options? Um, Colonel Heflin, do we have volunteer options? I'm assuming you're, you're talking about um, hours to um, uh, in the community, yeah. the community hours. Um, yes, we, we do have that. We have a lot of different options uh, over the years. And, and a lot of that we still do. Uh, a lot of people uh, do the local community calls to ask. Um, for our guys to volunteer to help. Um, we've had a library clubs off campus that have asked uh, friends of the library has actually called to, to help with their book sale that they have. Um, actually the uh, Camden burials that is getting ready to take place. We've been asked with that, but there, there's, there's a lot throughout the year. The fine arts center at Kershaw County is, is another, but yes, we, we are able to do that. And um, uh, it's again, case by case basis, but we still do it you know, throughout the year, but uh, if a senior needs it, we'll go above and beyond. Again, we're part of a big family. And so if uh, uh, they need it, we'll do it. Yeah, I mean, we have students that volunteer as a local, um, I wanna say soup kitchen, I guess for lack of a better word, that go down and volunteer at the Food for the Soul. Um, the library club does that. Um, there's there's lots of different opportunities for you to get plugged into the community and, and certainly um, fulfill a lot of service hours. Um, how many students are typically on campus? So if we were at capacity, um, we would have 302 students. Um, currently, we have about 260-ish um, here, and uh, that's, that's a good number for us. Um, but 302 would always be the max. So you would share your room with one other student, and uh, we'd, we've not had three-man rooms and probably, gosh, way before COVID. So um, you would have one other student that would be approximately your own age if they're in your rooms. All right, um, Captain Trapp, another question coming your way. It says, what services do you provide in terms of counseling and or therapy? So counseling and therapy wise, um, if it's, you know, a situation where you, a student is coming in that has a therapist or a counselor they're seeing beforehand, um, we utilize telehealth. So that's virtual visits. Um, they can continue those visits as often as they need to. Um, you know, we have a lot of, I'd say a vast uh, portion of our guys here now that utilize that telehealth. Um, any other counseling, you know, I, I, in my opinion, uh, coming from a teacher and a coach, I think we help counsel these guys um, every day, you know, to that capacity. I think if you need help or you need to talk through something, um, that's what we're here for. You know, faculty members are more than more than happy to talk through things. Um, we have a chaplain on campus, so if they ever feel the need to um, talk to a chaplain, you know, you can go see him at any point in time and he'll be more than happy to talk with you. But um, that's kind of our support systems as far as any kind of therapy or, or counseling here, here at Camden. Yeah, I, I do want to point out just really quickly, because sometimes there's a, a misconception. We're not a therapeutic boarding school. So, um, you know, this is not uh, somewhere where there's, you know, psychiatrist and all that available all the time. So the counseling, you know, would be more family counseling, ADD, ADHD, maybe some depression, things like that. But, um, but yeah, no heavy duty therapeutic setting here. Um, and we do work with a local counselor um, if he wants a new counselor or, you know, to, to have someone local. But in most cases, as, as Captain Trapp um, alluded to, you can maintain your relationship with your counselor now um, through telehealth. And that's usually what most guys do. All right, um, let's talk about IEPs. So 
Colonel Heflin, um, you know, some students come to us and they have some accommodations in place. Um, and we get this question a lot, you know, are, are we going to be able to fulfill those accommodations here at CMA? How would you answer a parent who has that concern? Uh, definitely. Uh, you know, a lot of the things that the IEP or the 504 plan calls for is basically what we do for every student, regardless if they, you know, had a plan or not. But, you know, the, the most important thing is the small class um, environment, the student to teacher ratio, uh, the tutorials, the learning center, uh, and those, uh, you know, help to facilitate that. And, uh, but if a student needs to sit closer to the front, um, you know, 10 to 12 students per class on average, uh, and some classes actually smaller than that. And so if, if, a, if a student needs to sit uh, to the front of the class, we can accommodate that by using that. And um, we also assist um, students, juniors and seniors, uh, with the SAT and the ACT with um, getting extended time. You know, that's not our, our decision. That's the college board or ACT's decision in order to make that happen. But we do uh, facilitate and, and help students with that. And sometimes it could e even be uh, a student needs extra help with notes and a teacher say, hey, well, I'm going to help you write your notes or give you a copy of the notes um, because um, maybe uh, they can't go as fast or, or, or something of that nature. So those are just a few of the things as, uh, that we do here as far as that is concerned. Yes. All right. And I want to let our viewers know if you do have questions, go ahead and get those in. We're getting close to uh, wrapping up. But if you have any last minute questions, again, post them there in the YouTube chat, go to any social media platform, use hashtag Camden Military, and we will try to answer those tonight. I want to talk about admissions just for a second. Um, most people that are watching are prospective parents and students. So um, the way the process works is you complete an online application uh, for a school year or summer. Uh, for the school year, there's a required interview. That interview can be in person or it can be virtual or it can be phone. Uh, for the summer, we don't require an interview, um, except in rare cases. If there's something on the application, we may, we may require one. Um, after that, you'll receive an email that asks you to submit your unofficial transcripts. You would send those in so we could kind of take a, a whole, whole picture, a whole look at the, the full picture of a young man coming in. And then um, it would basically be the, the offer of acceptance would be made. If you accept, you would get some enrollment forms and there you would move into, you know, what to bring, what not to bring, um, the medical forms, if he's on medications, filling all that out. So um, that's the process in a nutshell. There's a $100 application fee um, and it's $100 for each application. So if you go to summer school and fall, it has to, you have to pay $100 for each time. Um, and also on that application, and there's a, there's a box at the very end of the application that says other pertinent information. Um, please give us any other pertinent information that we didn't address in the application. But it's also important as far as financial aid. Um, we do offer financial aid. It's not something that we advertise on our website. Um, so we wait until parents are serious and watch an event like this or come to, to campus and visit or attend an event in one of the, the cities around the country that we host um, open houses in. Um, but if you will, in that pertinent information box, just put in there financial aid. Um, we will get you out the information to take you through those steps um, to get you some help off that tuition. Um, the maximum amount of aid from CMA is 30%, um, but that's a pretty good, pretty good deal, especially considering that we're like the most affordable military school in the country already. So um, we're about 30,000 for the school year. Um, that sounds like sticker shock, but you know, just today I was looking around at some other schools' tuitions and found some that were approaching 60,000. So um, yes, they talk about financial aid on their website, but they, you would definitely need it um, to, to pay 60,000 a year. But with 30,000, um, your typical amount for financial aid, somewhere between two to $4,000 off. Um, so you still got to come out the rest of that out of pocket, but um, pretty good deal. If you compare and shop around, uh, especially in Northern schools or in bigger city schools, you can't really find a private day school, um, much less expensive than what you can get the whole boarding school experience here at CMA. So uh, definitely let us know if you're interested in applying for financial aid. All right, a couple more questions. Um, is there a church on site? So Cadet Giuliano, can you talk about chapel and the attendance policies? Yes, so everyone is required to uh, do chapel. And that's what I kind of like. So at first when I came to CMA, I was not really very religious. I would rarely go to church back at home. I wasn't really connected with all that stuff. And going to chapel here and going to church here at CMA has showed me that it's not only about religion. It's about your growth through CMA. 
And the chaplain really talks about that. And you can really listen to what the chaplain says. And if you have to listen to what the chaplain says, he says a lot of key points on how you can thrive in the real world and how you really can connect with God and how you can do all this. And really throughout this, throughout Sunday, after we do chapel, it really sticks with you and connects with you. And you really think about that. Like, how can I do better? And how can I listen to this more? And how can I solve this problem? Um, but yes, chapel is every single uh, chaplain, every single Sunday and everyone is required to attend. Yes. Now we also have Bible study opportunities and other, um, you know, activities. we can actually attend church here in town. Um, a lot of our Catholic students do that. We have, you know, Baptist and I always tell families where the belt buckle of the Bible belt. So we can generally accommodate your spiritual needs here. Um, now, if you're of a non-Christian faith, we certainly have opportunities for you to practice your religion. We don't force you to go into the chapel for that, but you do have to study your doctrine um, during the uh, chapel hours. All right, guys, we're wrapping up. Questions have stopped. So I'm going to ask you one each one final question. And um, Simmons, we'll start with you. Um, if your dad's watching tonight, uh, what's something that maybe you want to tell your dad that you've never taken the opportunity to tell him before? Um, is Camden... Was it the right decision? Do you want to thank him? Do you want to say, dad, you made a mistake? Um, go ahead. Um, well, if he's watching, I'd probably say, I, I know I complain about this place sometimes, but it really is a, it's a great place to be. I mean, there's the brotherhood, the campus is beautiful. The people you meet, the teachers you have, the faculty and staff, it's just, it's all just, it's amazing. I mean, it's, it's a great opportunity to be here and I'm glad that I'm here, even though, Sometimes I don't act like it, and sometimes I don't appreciate it enough. All right. Thanks for that, man. All right. Um, we've got two last questions coming in, and then we're going to get to Cadet Giuliano. Um, let's see. What percentage of teen seniors attend college, and is there a main feeder school? Um, so we have about 95% of our guys go on to colleges um, once they leave CMA. Um, the remaining percent go into the service. Um, they may go back into family-owned businesses. Um, we don't necessarily have a feeder school. Um, they typically go back to their state supported institutions, wherever they're from, um, just to get that in-state tuition, because again, he will remain a resident of, um, the state that he's parents are paying taxes in. So, uh, so yeah, that works out well. And then we do have a relationship with the Citadel. Um, uh, we have Colonel Hufflin, what would you say? How many guys per year typically go to the Citadel? I would say, uh, probably about, uh, 10 people out of each graduating class. But we also have a, a, an agreement um, with the Citadel. We also have a, a new uh, agreement with uh, Virginia Military and Valley Forge Military. So basically, if you, uh, in a nutshell, there's, there's conditions in which you have to, to meet. But if you graduate from Camden, uh, it's pretty much automatic acceptance uh, because your requirements are included in our requirements uh, for graduation. However, I will say that the majority of our students do not go on to military colleges. Once they leave us, they typically go in, you know, like I said, state supported colleges. Um, all right. Um, last question for the summer program. Must you do the full three weeks? Um, you don't necessarily have to. If you want to earn academic credit, the answer would be yes, um, because you can earn academic credit in the summer program. However, if you just want to come in to kind of get the experience, get the lay of the land to see if it's a good fit, maybe for the school year, that's something that we could talk about. Um, so again, if you will, just send me an email. Um, if you visit our website, camdenmilitary.com, um, any email that you send from there comes to my inbox. So I will get back to you as quickly as possible. Um, but before we wrap up, I want to go back to Cadet Juliana really quick. And um, again, if your mom is watching, um, parents watching, what do you want to say? Is there anything that, like, like I gave John the opportunity, did you make a mistake? Do you thank him? What do you have to say to him? Well, I do know that my family is watching. I also know my girlfriend's watching. I know everyone's watching. Even my, my animals and my pets at home are watching. Uh, one thing I have to say is to my parents, especially my mom. She always was thinking it was the bad decision. She was really sad that she sent me here. But I just want to let my mom know that, mom, you made the right decision. You did the right thing. Because if I stayed back at home, I would not be going to college like I am now. I would not be doing as well as I am now, earning rank, making friends for so long, having a better relationship with you guys. And I just wanted to say, I love you guys and thank you. All right, gosh, perfect way to wrap up. 
All right, guys, I want to thank everybody, uh, Captain Trapp, Colonel Hufflin, Cadet Giuliano, and Simmons for joining me tonight. Um, and I hope we answer a lot of your questions. If you still have additional questions, though, um, or if we didn't get to your question tonight, please, please, please email us, admissions at camdenmilitary.com. Um, you can call us as well. The number's there on your screen, 800-948-6291. That admissions email comes straight into me, and I'll be happy to uh, get back to you. I'm pretty, pretty good about responding to emails quickly. All right. Well, that will do it for us tonight. edition of Conversations with Camden. So we hope to see you on campus soon. Oh, one more thing. Visit us in the city. Um, my, myself and Matt will both be traveling around the country pretty soon. Um, we're going to go to various sites. That's also listed on our website, candidmilitary.com. Um, we're going to be up north in New York and Boston and Chicago. We're going to be down in Florida, hitting all over the state, over in Atlanta. So a lot's coming up. Um, I'm actually going to be in Raleigh this weekend. So if anyone's watching from the central North Carolina area, come out and see me. I'm going to be over near Crabtree Valley Mall, and we can grab lunch at the Cheesecake Factory. All right. Until we see you on campus, take care and have a good night.